The morning star drive on 17.8. You soaring up with sky, now's the time, don't delay. I'm sitting in my ride, and it's time to fly. So let's realign, just listen and fill your mind. I'm um, hey guys, how's it going? And welcome to the MSD on Moments of It's Tuesday, June 4th, and so happy for you know each of you guys joining us. And we are ready to start, you know, this day, this wonderful Tuesday together with the Lord. So if you haven't already, subscribe to us on YouTube, follow us on SoundCloud, and make sure to subscribe support us on patreon uh, so today we have an exciting podcast for you and so we finally have uh, segment names for like the various segments that we'll be doing on tuesdays and so the first one um, i like to call this bible today right or the bible today right so we'll get into uh, later um uh, why that is like what's the motivation and what's the purpose behind the segment and then yes as always we'll be having 2g talks Yes, so uh, I hope everyone had a great weekend, right? All across Providence, all over the world, we just celebrated Alpha Day together. And with that, we have a really interesting message this week, right? Like the title of this week's message was Realize the Meaning of Dream Revelations. Uh, and I don't know if everyone, you know, on this uh, channel have been uh, participating in the, the quizzes, right? That have been ongoing for the last couple of weeks. Um, and, you know, it's something that I hope to participate in more too. But I, I don't know about for each person, but I'm, I'm sure, um, you know, there's people who have similar kind of thought processes like this, right? Like um, that... Uh, they're nervous to try something new and they're nervous to kind of give an answer, right? And so they're nervous to think about it. Uh, but I hope that everyone is joining. Um, and, you know, there's there's difference, like, there's something I, th I thought about while preparing for um, today's recording related to the quizzes. Um, but the first thing I will say is that this, this week's quiz was, like, really interesting, right? Because it had, like, it was, like, directly asking, like, you know, why do you think that, you know, God and the Holy Spirit and, you know, the Holy Son and Jesus are giving this message about, you know, realizing the, the meaning of dream revelations, right? So it's like just pointed, right? Like, why? what's the point of the message? Like, why are they giving this uh, to us? And so I hope that each person had a time to think about it. And um, for me too, right? Like, I think this is really interesting uh, because, you know, uh, as I was talking to some of the members about, you know, the MST 117.8, and I don't know the particular reasons why uh, each of you guys are, are, you know, take the time out to, to listen to the MSC 117.8. Uh, but one thing that I gather from speaking to some of the members here is that people are interested in like what other people, what each person takes away from the message. Right. And so we kind of like um, have different ways to glean like what each person is like thinking about the message. Right. And for many people, understanding what other people think kind of help them to see something that they themselves didn't see. And then like even talking about it with other people. Right. Like in like having QT together and having those kind of conversations help them to reflect on the message as well. Right. So there's like those reasons. And then also just having this platform where we can gather together and to talk about the word and to uh, listen to even pass the sky, like sharing, like uh, maybe one way to understand the word or another way to think about it, or just, just to bring everyone together in this sense, right. Even uh, on the internet, right. That's one way, right. That we get to try to understand the word better. Right. So um, that's kind of going to be like what the purpose of, of, you know, this segment will be too but related to the the quiz right thinking about the message right like um it's good to have like that kind of initial um response right and that initial reaction to like oh like okay why did, are the trinity giving this message of course you want to like realize more about it through prayer and through trying to answer the question uh through action but yeah for each person right there must there must be something so for me like um even before the message came out I think this was so pertinent because um, recently, I don't know about for each person, but I've been having a lot more dreams, right? And then like even just this morning, um, like my parents don't talk about like a whole lot of things like my mom does, but like my dad doesn't share everything. But I think I've seen that lately that my dad's been talking to, especially my mom, more about, you know, dreams, right? And that's also because he's been having more dreams too. And like similarly for myself, like I've been having more dreams as of late too. And so I don't know how it is for each person, right? But uh, I, I like, I'm not someone who um, growing up like had dreams that I recalled all the time. I definitely have like some very key dreams, like very big, like monumental dreams that I do remember. But lately there have been more like dreams on the regular that I've been, you know, dreaming. And um, 
even without like thinking really deeply about each and every one of those dreams, I can tell that those dreams like have to do with my my current circumstances and or like the things going on like in our church or our family and those kind of things, right? So, uh, for me, when uh, we heard this message on on Sunday, uh, it really made me feel like wow, like um, you know maybe the Trinity is trying to speak to us about dreams and they want us to check our faith and they want us to understand and discern clearly about like the the place and the circumstance that we're at so that for me was something that i was like thinking about while listening to the sunday message so i'm curious to to think like what each of you guys think about the message too right and so i'm, I'm sure there's like you know a variety of reasons and it's really something that we have to take action on right uh, but yes, related to that, you know, feel free to leave a comment below like, uh, okay, well, like, why did you think the message about dreams has come out? And, you know, don't forget that on every Thursday, we have Q&A Thursday. So if you, you know, have questions too, like whether about the Sunday message or about any of the lessons or any of the, the messages, uh, you know, send them to Pass the Sky when you can. And if you haven't yet, you know, leave likes and comments to build our community. So we're really happy to have everyone joining us every weekday. Uh, and, you know, like this platform is continuing to grow more and more, right? And so uh, let's really get up and support each other each and every day. Yes. And as you guys know, the Rebel Pastor live streams will be taking place every Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time or Wednesday at 10 a.m. Korea Standard Time. So if you have newcomers, you know, whom you want to introduce a word to, you know, please send him that link and also hop on to join Peace Guy on his live streams and answer his questions and help be part of internet ministry in an exciting new way. Uh, so we're really thankful that, you know, he has like the that channel, right? So as you guys have been following for the last few weeks, right, he's gone to Korea and like gone to different places. And so it's really exciting that no matter where we go, we have these opportunities to um, like showcase the world, right? Like through the internet. And so let's really show like support for each and every one of those things. Yes. So once again, how are, you know, how are you all doing? You know, what's going on in your part of the world? Um, like what's going on in your part of life? Um, you know, I hope that many of you guys can continue to have conversations together, you know, both on this channel and outside uh, together with Pass the Sky and even with other people too. Uh, feel free to reach out and I would love to to get connected and to chat too, right? Because we have so many interesting conversations like with members, right? Like uh, this past weekend on Sunday, I taught the uh, the Milky Way at our church of Bible study. And it was kind of quite crazy because, you know, um, like just the previous week, I had spent time with these kids like going hiking and like um, joining this like family activity that we had. Uh, and it's a really great time. And so when we like came to the time of like having the lesson, I think it was a little chaotic, right? Because sometimes like if you're like, um, uh, like kind of having fun with these, uh, with the same kids, it's hard to like grab their attention in like a, a, a more of a serious manner, right? Like if they kind of equate you to be the person who does one, it's hard to do the other, right? So it's not to say that the kids didn't listen, but the atmosphere wasn't like, exactly conducive to have a serious conversation about the word right and so uh, it was interesting like when, when they set up to have the message uh, the kids like brought like these mattresses and cushions and blankets and all of these kind of things right like things that you wouldn't think of being in an environment right to listen to the message so it was it was it was funny right to see them run they were like wow it's it's like it doesn't look great like one of the kids said it doesn't look great but it's so comfortable right and like you know to each of our minds right and so each of you may be thinking this too right like you know the goal of listening to the message isn't to be you know huddled up in blankets like lying down on mattresses and being comfortable in a messy way right it's like a time to to build our constitution and to to actually uh, produce order in our lives right by listening to the word that helps uh, us cut off the dross in our life and um get rid of the get rid of the the excess you know comforts and the things that kind of like distract us from like the the life that we should live so it was, it was very interesting uh, but one thing uh one conversation that i had with actually one of the parents of these milky way was that uh, and this is someone who has um worked extensively um, in San Francisco to help both with ministry and um, also with taking care of the Milky Way too, right? Because they have like three of their own. So they work really, really hard and um, they always have an open ear, um, especially with like how to take care of their second gen and, and how to take care of the church too. So they're like always wanting to have conversation about this. So I'm, I'm very grateful to them. Uh, but this member is originally from Taiwan. And one of the things that they said is that, you know, in, in Taiwan, 
like in the time that they've gone, like especially after having kids, they can see how well like Taiwan has like set things up so that like it's easy for the kids to listen and focus, right? Like they obviously probably don't have areas where like it's mattresses like strewn about in like a haphazard chaotic way with blankets and things, but it's really like a, a, a place that where the kids can focus, where there's no distractions, uh, where the things that can take away are, are, their attention aren't like right there, right? So, and I've seen, and I, I completely understood what the members talking about because it was the same thing like growing up like for me in Korea too, right? And it's like, it's probably also the difference in culture and so you guys can like feel free to let me know what you think right like in this kind of difference between the east to the west right for me growing up even when i was like seven and younger and you know this is probably true actually from a lot of province churches like not even in the east right like focusing like sitting there and focusing and listening to the message was not a foreign thing yes of, of course there were times as a kid where i would fidget a little bit i think the more common thing was the kids would fall asleep right so i was not a fidgeter i was a fall asleep kind of kid right so that's not all the time but you know like that is kind of like a big thing that kids would do right because sometimes the messages tend to be long and um you know as a kid you probably are, are zoning out a little bit and like um uh, you know, preparation to listen to the message actually starts from, even from the day before, right? Like even for the Sabbath, we prepare from Saturday. But as a kid, you know, on Saturdays, you're like, you know, busy and having fun and you're sleeping late. And so when you wake up on Sunday, you're, uh, you're tired, but it's kind of an excuse, right? You're not physically tired. You're like emotionally tired, right? You don't want to like sit there um, and behave, right? But you still do, right? So like, that's the example. And that's the culture that I saw like as a kid. So even if there were times where, um, you know, maybe I was, uh, I, I wanted to uh, put myself to sleep while listening to the message, I knew that the right thing was to sit there and focus and listen. And I also knew the value of the word, even if like, um, I wasn't like uh, mentally mature enough to like listen to him from start to finish like with a really attentive heart so that it's i i hope that that's interesting to you guys right because even as a kid that's something that i felt so i understood what this with this uh blessed family member was um saying but the interesting thing that they noted was that even though that's the case right like in taiwan right the kids are, are maybe more orderly the environment seems better but the kids here they seem to remember right? The key points of the message better, right? And, you know, it's funny because I can see what they're talking about too, right? And so um, part of like that kind of conversation is like what we're gonna um, like talk about today. Um, but like, yeah, when I see um, like even the kids today that uh, the kids on Sunday that I was teaching, like we went through this, the story of Noah and the flood and like, you know, even before the, the, this, the, um, message was starting even before the lesson was underway like they all know the key points right they're there so they're like shouting out like all the things they remember about noah's story about you know like you know where we are in history today like all the questions i had they have answers right but i distinctly remember that when i was a kid even if there were like questions that the teacher would ask most of the time i would sit there and and just quietly listen Right. And so like, and sometimes there, I probably wouldn't recall as actively. Right. So there's, there's like these like differences. Right. So here it was chaotic and the kids are like interrupting, like almost like every 10 seconds. And so maybe a lesson that would take normally maybe half an hour to an hour max, like took over like an hour and 15 minutes. Right. Like on, on top of like all these additional explanations. Right. So yeah, like tell me like from your guys' perspective and from what you guys remember. Um, and like when you think about Providence Street going forward, like what kind of things should we prioritize? And like, how do you guys feel about how we should raise right, the future Providence? Right. And like what kind of a culture should we make, especially in this global world, uh, in this Western English speaking world and at your local church and even in within your family and within your personal life, too, with how you guys want to do. So there's a reason why I brought all these things up. Um, I think it connects to the first major segment that we have today. Uh, as we said, it's going to be called Bible Today and also uh, 2G Talks. You know, I'll be spending time to explain like what Bible Today is. And it kind of like relates to this conversation that I had with this uh, church member, with this family member. Uh, but with this, we're going to go into the first break for today. And the reason why, you know, I set it up with this, right, is because um, this song that we're going to listen to today, uh, this first break, it also has to do with that too, 
right? So for this Sunday um, at church, we sing the song, um, For Whom Did I Come? Right. And so, right. Like, so it's like the song that goes, right. Like, you know, for whom am I ringing the bell? Right. Like for whom did it do you know, no, you know, I've come into this dismal world, right. Whom do you think I came here for? Right. For whom does the bell toll? And so it's a very deep song. And I don't know how each of you guys feel about the song. You guys can feel free to let me know in the comments below. But I think, you know, as I've been doing, you know, um, this full length, um, podcast episode, like every week, I'm like listening more to the Sunday um, like praise songs and I'm looking carefully at the lyrics to see like, oh, is there is there a song that I should play for that week? And so I don't know if this is a trend that I'm going to continue to follow, but it's made me appreciate the songs in a deeper way. Right. So maybe like talking about the songs is something that we should really do, too. Right. So that we see the value. And so there was a line that came up like in verse three, right at the very end. Um, and it has to do with this, right? It has to do with the, the segment Bible today and 2G talks through. And like, honestly, the whole reason why, um, I've been, you know, uh, working with Pastor Sky on the, these segments and, you know, even doing these full length episodes. So in verse three, like it says this part, it says, you must make history that will remain, right? You must make history that will remain. And it says, let's create what's eternal. Right. And uh, like when I saw that, right, like, you know, we've heard we've sung the song like um, many times, right? Like <laughs> hundreds of times, probably. Right. If you go to even like the English demo of it, right, it has like 9000 views. So that's at least 9000 times that someone sung or listened to the song. And so for me, like, but it was the first time I really concentrated on these lyrics. Right. So, you know, with even that car, that small conversation about like, what, like, how should we prepare the kids, right, to listen to the message, right? Like, like what it is that that we should do as individuals, as family, as a church, um, and like how should we put this word into practice? Um, like that's all for this goal, right? To make history that will remain, to make history that will go for a thousand years, right? Like making something that will last and creating something that's eternal, right? That's such an important and and, and a big topic, and right, like so even like even the the very intro to that song, like why do you think I came to this world? Right. Like that's coming, that's coming from all sources, right? That's coming from the Holy son. That's coming from Jesus. That's even coming from the son's name. And that's coming from God and the Holy spirit, right? Because they are here working with us today, right? Like, why do you think I came here? Like, why do I, why do you think I go through this struggle? It's so that we can have this great history that will last forever. And that, well, you know, has this uh, brightness and that fulfills the purpose of creation that has uh, this place filled with the rapture of love. And so how do we go about doing that? That's going to be like part of the Bible today. Right. And so um, we'll get into that in a bit. But today we have our first break with the song for whom do you th did I come? struggled for for whom does the bell toll it was for you you believe you who love me and follow I've come into this dismal world whom do you think I can for. Whom do you think I struggle for? For whom does the bell toll? It was for you, you believe, you who love me and follow. Sword fearlessly 
So I hope that you guys all enjoyed um, that song. For whom did I come? And so, you know, like, honestly, like, listening to, like, Providence songs, there may be various times where, you know, we have various different feelings towards it. Uh, but, you know, we all heard the message recently talking about how, like, the songs of Providence, especially these, these new songs, are not just songs, like, for the environment or to make things feel good or, like, about just any old thing in the world. But these are songs that specifically talk about the things that, uh, Sun Zing Nim has done and that the Trinity have done through him and in this history, right? So, you know, we uh, talk about many times how like the uh, inspiration, right? The lyrics come from God and the melody comes from the Holy Spirit and in, in each of these things. And so um, I, I kind of hope to play more and more of Sun Zing songs too, because these are the songs that are, are meant to last a thousand years and to kind of break down the, uh, the, the lyrics and to help each and every one of us like think about it to a deeper level. And so like I hope that you guys kind of like do these uh, do this exercise too. Or, like as you listen to the praise songs, as you sing to the praise songs, uh, and I especially encourage us for people who maybe like, and I'll be honest, like who may be tired of of singing some of the songs, right? So like now, okay, like if you're at a place where oh, it feels like you know even the song, right? It came out in 2019. We've been singing it for five years, and so like okay, after five years, like, oh, okay, how do I gain the value of this song again, right? Okay, let me really look at the lyrics, and maybe for some people, like it'll be the melody that speaks to them more too. So like whatever way it is, because these are the songs specifically the things that the Trinity have done, and in order for us to give glory about them to a higher level, I really hope that we can. Can, um, gain the appreciation and think about it in the correct way. So I'll, I'll try to play more and more of uh, Sun Zing songs specifically uh, as we go uh, forward. And so let's get, may enter into our first major segment for today. Um, it's going to be called Bible Today, right? And so basically what this is talking about is, you know, we are writing the Bibles of today, right? Something that I've talked about, you know, a couple weeks ago is that something isn't telling us to write more books, right? Um, and that there hasn't been like a major title that, you know, that people in Providence have uh, written yet. And, you know, there are some people already in Providence who have published some books. Like I, I've actually spoken to some of them. Um, and so, you know, there's probably something specific that something is talking about, right? Like books that testify about 
uh, about Sun Sung Yim. But, you know, there's many different ways that we go about that, right? I'm sure the Holy Spirit will provide inspiration uh, to the people who uh, should write about various different topics, right? But each of us are writing the Bible to the today. So, like, that kind of actual writing, you know, um, it's like it's like the literal act of writing, right? But what I mean by each of us writing the Bibles of today, it, I'm talking about like even with the the new songs, right? And like all of these things, the problem, the things that we're doing, right? All the things that have been done at the, uh, you know, at the onset of Providence, right? In the last 46 years, all the things that Sun Sing-nim have done, uh, has done for the last 46 years, and that the Trinity, you know, do through him and do through each of us. Right, that's literally the Bible of today, right? Um, and that's the Bible that will be read for the next thousand years. And so, like across time, I'm sure like something will be like consolidated into the Bibles of today. Uh, that that you know has uh, of today that will be uh, read tomorrow. And like even when we look at the the Bible of the Old Testament and the New Testament, yeah, sure, there are many versions. Uh, but you know, I I heard this update from someone um a while ago, right? Someone who I think used to not be a believer i don't know if they were like atheist or if they were agnostic or if they were like muslim or something else uh you know but they used to like go around like asking like people like a common question that a lot of non-christian people ask right like how can you trust that um the bible is like the word of god right how can you like you know we know that it was written by people we know who it was written by but how can we say that that was written from god and that you know the messages um that were selected to be part of the bible are the message that God wants to to say, right? And like they, he said that whenever he would ask the Christians this, they would be stumped, right? They wouldn't really have an answer. And he said finally one day he heard an answer that he um that made him change his mind, that eventually made him convert to Christianity. And I don't remember like like word by word the answer that he heard, but basically he like the person who um he asked us to, I think he was he maybe reading the Bible itself, and he said when he heard this. He, he was really shocked, right? So, like, the person who answered him said, well, you know, when you look at all of the resources that are available for the Bible, um, there are, like, 30,000 um, different, um, like, proverbs and accounts and stories and testimonies, like, written from the elders. And there's, like, you know, hundreds of thousands, like, tens of thousands of letters written by so-and-so and all of these people. And so it means that, you know, people worked really hard at the time to, like, store and to uh, hold these um, different things. And, you know, like, all of these things have been checked. And so even if there's, like, one line in the Bible, like, that was taken out of, like, these hundreds, hundreds of different, like, letters, right? One line was consolidated. We know where all the resources for that one line came from, right? where the citation came from and it's easy for us to check right and so like that was really uh, impressive and so I, I think that's kind of like an external way to testify about the bible right what we know from Pro providence is right like if there's a for every question in the bible there's a pair right there's an answer and it's contained internally within the bible so as long as we have the tools to uh, look internally at what's happening i think that's uh, more impressive but sometimes the external questions are like what you know people try to to use try to uh, refute uh, the message in some capacity so that, that was a very interesting uh, conversation uh, but yeah so going back to the beginning like we are writing the bibles of today right like so something is like literally writing like as much as he can but he does even more than he writes right and like something that he said from the very beginning is that there's kind of a difference in the level of testimony that comes from like yourself Versus like having someone else who will stand up for you and write for you, right? So each of us have like many things that we need to contribute and that we need to write too, right? And it has to be done in an organized manner as well. Uh, and if we don't, um, if we forget, then we die, right? If we forget, the story dies with us. If we forget, the lesson ends with us too. And so the forty uh, for the, the things that we've experienced the last 46 years, we have to recall it and write it in the Bible today. But specifically what this um, segment will be talking about is like, uh, drawing these connections of the things that are happening in the present, right? Like whether they're the things that Sun Zingim has directly um, done or have is doing right now, right? In the 46 years, uh, in the 46th year or in the last 45 years and the things that are happening in uh, Wormingdong and the things that are happening in each church and the ha things that are happening in our lives and the things that are being uh, preached in the message today, right? Seeing how that connects to the things that happened in the past, 
right? So like, I'm, we're going to try to draw connections from what's happening today to the lessons and to the 30 principles and also to um, like the direct scriptures. And then we're going to try to see how it connects to the future, right? When we think about the thousand years, when we think about the people who have yet to come, who have to come, uh, we're going to try to draw these connections and um, like paint a, a bigger picture. And so in a way, I hope that there's connections. Um, like the important part is like for us to see what we need to do today, right? And so on Tuesdays in, in the previous few weeks with Pastor Sky, he uh, used to do the um, the practical word um, studies, right? Like on Tuesdays. And so in a way that I hope it, I hope it's similar to that. Um, and I hope it allows us to think about the word from another level. Like that I hope that one, it'll um, give us something to take action on. And two, that it'll give us something to think about, like a different framework to, to think about. Right. So, um, yeah, so like as we um, think about the message today, like let's write, get right into uh, like the Bible of today. And I think now is actually a perfect time to uh, get into this because this week's message is perfect for this, right? Because uh, we heard in this week's message that God fulfills his history in the same way, right? Like, and, and this is a, this was a very interesting line for me, right? So yes, and we this this is something that we heard before, right? The the principle of recurring history, right? We heard the, the scriptures from Ecclesiastes 3, uh, 15 today. Uh, and, you know, uh, we, we uh, have used the scriptures like Ecclesiastes 1, 9 and each of these things about um, how, you know, things happen in the same way, right? So we look at the past to know what uh, we should do in the present. And we look at, you know, the past to also see what's going to happen in the future. Uh, but he also said that he made makes things happen slightly differently, right? In miraculous ways, right? And so that's such a huge thing, right? So yes, it, it does repeat, but you know, it's not to say that it happens like 100% the same way, right? Like the details are kind of different, but the, the shape is the same, right? So let's look at like how today, tomorrow, and yesterday history has, um, you know, played out, right? How it has been carried out to see, you know, how we can run better, right? In the moment, right? And in, in each of our lives too. Right. So another thing that, you know, came up in the message today and, you know, I'm so thankful, right? That I think both this week and last week, like some of you have been really talking about this, how he like has reviewed this message like 10 times before sending it out to us. And I think you can really tell, right? It's not to say that, you know, um, you can tell when he doesn't do that, but like when he really does, like he really wants us to look at this carefully and you could see like the flow and ebb of the message, like from, from the start to the finish, right? So one of the things that he's emphasized today that he said many times before, especially in the recent few weeks, but like, uh, seeing like, like exactly like the importance of it to a higher level today, he's talked about how history starts from like one person and from one source, right? And I think this was like really impactful because, um, this week when I was like teaching the, the Milky Ways, um, the lesson I ended up teaching them was Noah and the flood, right? Because it happened to be the, the, the next lesson on their list. And like, I actually taught this lesson last week, right? To some, some uh, SS newcomers. And so it was interesting, right? So I didn't really have to prepare too much additional uh, information because I, I it was already on, fresh on my mind. And so it was interesting because when I was teaching these, um, the newcomers last week, right, they've already learned, right, like the purpose of creation and the fall lesson, right? So they've kind of like already went to the advanced lessons, but when we're doing the intro stuff, like we didn't have time to go into Noah and the Flood, right? So I had to try to make Noah and the Flood more advanced than it may be, right? Because typically we teach it in the beginning, right? So one of the points that really stood out to me was thinking about how history grows from one person. Right. Because if you look at the end of Genesis four, um, that's like the end of Adam and Eve's story. Right. And before it goes into the genealogy from how it goes from Adam to Noah. Right. Like how many people like who gives birth to who uh, from um, Adam to Noah's time in the sixteen hundred years in between. But at the end of Genesis four, um, there's a line and it says from this time on, people began to call on the Lord. Right. And so um, it's talking about when Adam had. Uh, after Adam had Cain and Abel and Seth, and Seth, Seth had a son too named Enoch or Enosh, right? And so from that time on, people began to call on the Lord, right? So that's like kind of like in the um, third generation, right? So we know that history started from Adam and Eve, but from the third generation, right? Like you can kind of see, uh, um, um, see from that scripture that how history starts to grow and more and more people start to call on God, right? But we know that it was like sinful. And so how... Um, 
right? Like at Noah's time, even though like there were these these uh, sons of God, right? These believers of God and the people who came from Adam and Eve's uh, physical and spiritual lineage. But even though they believed in God, they didn't live like it, right? So they lived a sinful life. And uh, the only person that was like redeemable uh, in God's history at the time was Noah, right? And so like we, we know that to be the judgment of the flood. So I think when I was teaching these SS newcomers, that's the point I kind of focused on more because like the, uh, the, the original point that we emphasize a lot, right? When it's an intro lesson is that um, it's not a, a worldwide flood. Right, we have to understand the Bible in the context of the time that it was written in order to see it clearly, and we have to kind of see what God wants to do in this time time period, right? But one of the other po uh, actually the actually the bigger thing that we focus is like the scripture uh, of what Jesus said, right? That at the time when the Son of Man returns, it'll be like the time of Noah, right? And so connecting this to the the idea of how history starts from one person, right? Or it, it starts from like a, a small uh, place and it grows large right like i think this is really impactful because we see how the seeds of right the word and the seeds of history like grows from that small source right like last week we kind of like talked about the sequoia trees right like how it starts from a, a seed that's probably at the size of like a mustard seed um and like the thing that we can see from noah's story and from this, right, from the example of Providence today and from Noah's story is really how history, like uh, what happens in history, depending on how it begins, right? If there's wickedness in the, be in the beginning, right, with Adam and Eve and from the time of, of Adam and Eve, um, like from the time of Seth and, and Enosh and like how they worshipped uh, from 1600 years, we see how it grows, how history grew from one person and we see how it, it grew in not a great way. Right, so even for us too, when we think about history today, um, and uh, I'm not talking about like Providence history and for the thousand year history, but like the way that we live, right, in the way that our family is, right, from the time of our ancestor, right, if there's someone who uh, maybe like didn't live like entirely in the best way and they had some negative habits, right, there was someone who um, I think one of the big ones is, is a big alcoholic, right, so if from one person, right, there's a, a trait of alcoholism, right, that person might not see how big their actions may be, and right, they might have the mentality, right, it's my life, my choice, I can do whatever I want to. But when we expand from one person and see how their children live, right, we know that alcoholism is a trait that carries over into the next generation, right? So imagine from that one person, you extend out 1600 years. Right. So from Adam and Eve, you extend out 1600 years. We see the huge ramifications of that person's actions. Right. And even for us today, too, that's why we have to have the right bearings and um, how we can uh, improve ourselves today, too. Right. Um, and so, yeah. So for us, because we have the one person, because we have God working in this time period, we can make history in a bigger way because he set the, the, uh, the perfect example and he learned from Jesus and Jesus himself did that too, right? And so like one of the other things that we look in the Bible, and this is something else that someone in the world said, um, but like one of the accolades that we refer to when we think about Jesus and, uh, you know, the Holy Son is that he is the king of kings. Right. And so why is he referred to as the king of kings? Right. Like, so when you think about kings, like what kind of qualities do kings have? Right. Like each person who is deemed the king, and we're not like talking just about like royalty, right? Like royalty, right? Because Jesus himself wasn't like royally, right? Like a crowned king, right? In the world, right? But it's these people who exhibit kingly behavior, right? They each have a quality that makes them a king. But you can look at like biblical kings too, right? Like even uh, 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 Daniel, uh, I mean, uh, not Daniel, David, right? He was a king that took after God's heart, right? And that like God, when he saw David's heart, he had these kingly qualities, right? And even Saul, right? In the beginning, he had these queenly qualities. And Solomon too, right? Even though he had many mistakes, right? He was someone who had uh, wisdom, right? And so in that regard, he was a king, right? And the whole world sought after his wisdom. So each of these kings, they have these kingly qualities. Saul, David, um, uh, Solomon, and even like people who aren't kings, right? Like, uh, but are 
are key central figures in the Bible, they had kingly qualities, right? Joshua had, you know, he had his bravery and courage as he went into the land of Canaan. Uh, we have Peter, who was the uh, the first to uh, acknowledge what, what Jesus says. So they exhibit these kingly qualities, but Jesus is the person, when you think about all of the kingly qualities that a person can have, he was the king of kings, right? He showed us that perfect example. And, you know, so that's that's huge, right? That's a huge analysis. And so for us today, right, 2,000 years after Jesus came, because he started history from that one person who was perfect and who didn't have those, um, uh, those flaws, we have this tremendous history today. And so in the same way, as we make this thousand year history, right, the reason why I feel like that this point has been emphasized over and over again, the, especially these last few weeks, that there's one person that the Trinity used, right? That there's one person that they are making this history through, that they are doing everything through this person, is that he is setting that perfect example. Right. And I think more and more as we live life, for those of us who are still in this history, we see why that example is so important. Right. Because I'm sure that each and every one of us go through um, problems and uh, things within our lives. Right. Where we need to take action and we need to do something. And who provi pro provides that example? It's something. Right. And it's what the Trinity have done through him. And it's like, how we see that relationship between Sanzinim and the Trinity. And we see, wow, okay, that is how I should take action. And, you know, this isn't something new. And the more stories we hear about Sanzinim, we see that. And so I hope that when we listen to the word that we'll be able to see that um, going forward. So, yeah, so that's, um, you know, the Bible today and that's the segment today. And so I hope that you guys all, you know, had a good time um, listening to it. Um, and so to kind of like give more context to it, um, today's 2G Talks will go into like how this connects, right, to 2G Talks into the future, right? Because we kind of like talked about the, the present. Um, and I'm going to tie this back to the, the conversation that I had with the member in the beginning. Uh, but before we do that, let's get into the second break of today. So this is the third time that um, we're, we'll be playing this song, but I hope that you guys have been really enjoying it. It's that first song from the uh, uh, that, that new album that the Somni Boys have come out with. And so I hope that you guys really enjoy it, right? So that we can both support the, the work that the members are doing across the world to give glory. And that we can understand the the value of uh, Sunsing songs like even more too, right? Like so, I really applaud you know all of our members across the world who are giving glory, writing songs, writing things, writing the Bible of today, uh, and all of this is very important because we're showing how we're putting that word into practice and how we're connecting it. And so, you know, I, I heard some new songs by the Somni Boy uh, Somni Boys recently, and it was like so good. And so I hope that we can really continue to support not just them, but all of our province artists all across the world. So let's get into our second break of today with the song Until the End. I'ma make this short and sweet. Your time is done. You had your chance. Finished. I'm going to the end, I don't quit, I'ma make it Can see the finish line, I can feel it, I can taste it Everything I say, I just do, I don't fake it Your time is up, we're going all the way Until the end It's not too late, are you giving up already? Check it out Here we go It's not too late you chose this back cause you thought it was right for you You can't give up right now when you know what you gotta do Until the end, until the end, until the end You chose this back cause you thought it was right for you You can't give up right now when you know what you gotta do Until the end, until the end I chose from the start This the path to love forever I want Man, thoughts are never enough So I put you in my mind, yup With every single thought 
Even when I stumble, find my way up to the top Coming to reach a higher levels, I can never stop It's so easy to lose everything But what's great about life is you can get it back The type of life you want, you really have to make it Give your heart willing life, you will take it This path of love, I'll never change I give it to you, I will stay the same This a real love, no plastic no This a true love, not basic not So now we're going up to the end, to the end, hey So now we're going up to the end, to the end, hey, hey You chose this path cause you thought it was right for you Awesome. So yes, that was our second break for today until the end. So I hope that you guys really enjoyed that. Yes. So our final segment for today is another segment of 2G Talks. Um, so today specifically is going to connect to both uh, Bible today and also to the introduction today where I was like uh, recounting like the conversation with members. And so as I mentioned, like this week, I taught the Milky Way at a church, uh, Noah and the Judgment of the Flood. And it's really interesting. And I'm sure that uh, other people who've interacted with, um, you know, not not just Milky Way, but second gen and also people who are just going through re-education in Providence, right? Because we also hear the lessons, you know, on Sundays and like just in passing, right? Like in across various educations, um, people know, right? The, um, I won't say people know the key point, right? Because there's various key points, but people know the punchline, Right? Like, it might sound kind of weird to say, right? But people know the thing that's supposed to be the kicker, right? So the surprise of it's gone. Right? So growing up, right? Like, as especially as second generation, you see the punchline to the thing, right? So for Noah and the Judgment of the Flood, uh, like, you know, you can say there's various punchlines, but one of the big ones is that it's a local flood, right? It's a regional judgment, right? Not a worldwide uh, judgment, right? At, at Noah's time. So that <laughs> that's like the punchline and that the, and that the newcomer is supposed to uh, realize and parse through and see. And, you know, there, there's different key points to that, right? But as, uh, as a, either a second gen or someone who's heard the lesson many times before and going through re-education, you know that part too already, right? You hear that key point many times, right? So uh, it was interesting, like, teach, trying to teach these kids because instead of like the like that part of the message the parts that they're more interested in are like the um the the granular details right they, they want to know the facts of the case right they want to know like why it's a it's a regional flood not not a um worldwide flood they want to know like the proof they want to know like the things about the animals the size about the ark right the uh, meteorological um evidence right like the the water levels the historical record they want to know that kind of stuff right so in some ways that can like detract away from the the key point right and and so the, the key point is also just different from the the punchline like the key point of like understanding the bible in the way that god wants seeing it from his perspective like those key points and the key points tied to that sometimes like they they, they know that part <laughs> they know that we like uh, the the previous lesson the kids learned was the lesson about parables and they know the punchline and they know the key point about how we need to understand the Bible from God's perspective, right? So the things they want to know about are instead about the animals, about what it means, about the characteristics, and about those kind of things. Um, and growing up, I think that was always the case, even for me too, right? Especially at their age. Um, and so, like, I think the only time when you start to really think about the key point more in detail then, right, instead of focusing on the... Uh, like maybe the the more i don't want to say superficial but maybe the more <laughs> physical details I, I i can't really like I know, maybe you guys have better um uh word uh, description for that right like the, maybe the, the less important things and focusing more on the key point is like when we're in the position to really think about the value and importance of the lesson 
right? So, like, like, so the, the most common example is that when we have to teach someone else, right, then we have to really think about the lesson, right? Okay, like how do I explain this well to this person? And so you have to learn it much better than you knew before when you have to teach. And, you know, the second time, you know, like not is because, you know, that's the reason why we encourage people to lecture and to teach a lot and to have that experience or go through lecture training, right? But even if we're not lecturing, which, you know, you know, we definitely should. And um, I hope that many people here, even if you haven't, that you are put into a position or that God takes you to a place where you at least have that experience, right? Uh, but if you don't, right, like another time when we really think about the value and importance of the lesson is when you're really seeking for yourself. Right. Like even like with the song today, for whom did I come? Because I'm like really trying to understand the value and like what it is that, you know, um, the Trinity you're trying to tell me about. Right. I was looking at the the um, the lyrics and trying to think deeper about it, too. So even for us, to, uh, us too, um, you know, whether it's a time that we're a newcomer or whether it's a time where like we're really trying to seek God's answer, uh, you might really engross yourself in the message and try to understand it deeper, too. All right, so for me, I think that that's around the time that I like when I really start to care about the word, that's when I started to really think about the Bible more, too. Right. And this process took a long time. So this is how this connects to second generation. I think uh, in thinking about the future of uh, the providence and the future of, of um, each and every one of our lives. Right. Um, it's like, like this kind of probably started like towards high school. Right. This is the story that I shared for the last two weeks. And maybe a little bit in college, like caring more about the, um, the the stories in the Bible, like more detail, trying to know all this stuff. And then this is like mostly after college, right? That I was like, okay, I want to know like the details of the stories. And sure, like I, even to this day, I, I haven't looked up everything, but now I like want to know more. Right, so I'm seeking. Right? And so uh, like after I graduated from college, I started to look more carefully at the Bible stories. And so now when I see the past and I see the stories, like I, I don't just see like stories. I don't just see like recount accounts of stuff, but I see, you know, like our lives. Right? I see my life and providence. And, you know, my story, right? Our stories, right? Written in the Bible. And so now I want to look at the connections, like, more in detail, right? So, like, that's, like, the motivation for Bible today. And, you know, that's honestly why we read the Bible too, right? So, um, you know, something you did say recently how, you know, even if you don't know the Old and the New Testament that well, if you know the, if you know the word of the complete Testament really well, then, you know, you still have succeeded, right? You're doing well. So, you know, that still holds true too. And so uh, when, if we do look at the Old and the New Testament, then I think, yes, like um, there's some people who are like bibliophiles and, and I don't, don't mean that in terms of like the Bible, but they just really like books, right? And so there's some people who really know the content and the knowledge of the Old Testament and the New Testament well. But for us, as we look through these lessons, we see the connection to us today, right? So even in the, in the, the scripture about... Um, about even uh, what Jesus said about people and about the coming of the Son of Man, about the second coming, is that it'll be like the time of Noah, right? And it says very at the very end, like people were giving in, in marriage and they're just eating and drinking and, and enjoying themselves. And up until the day that Noah entered the ark, people had no idea that judgment was coming. And, and you know, what does that mean that they didn't know what judgment was coming? It means that they didn't know the word. Like they didn't see how it applied to their life and they didn't take action on it. They didn't save themselves. They didn't seek God and they didn't uh, listen to the one that he sent. Um, and so like we see the connection today, right? That's why we learned the lesson because that's what's going to happen today, right? Eight people, only eight people in that whole region were saved. And so for us too, we see how small it is, right? We see like, um, like, uh, we see the effort and we see the position of someone who's in this history today as someone who's boarded the ark, right? In the Old Testament, there was a physical ark, right? But now like Jesus is the ark, the Holy Son is the ark, the word is the ark that we uh, build, we take action on, that we enter and that we avoid judgment and that we are saved and we have this established this everlasting uh, covenant and this relationship between us and the Trinity, right? So we see the connection and so we see it in so much more detail, right? So like, 
kind of like similar to that, like, um, and this is something that I've talked about on 2G Talks before, but it was like a conversation that I had with uh, uh, another member uh, this week, right? It, it was just kind of the same collection of members on Sunday after service, right? Like, because um, growing up as a second gen, um, I think one of the kind of the major um, turning points and one of the key parts of the Bible that I really liked was from Isaiah like 11, right? Like where it talks about um, the the wolf and the lamb and the lion and the calf right, being led by the, 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 the young child to lead them. Um, and because it made so much sense, it made sense so much sense that this is like the 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 uh, goal, right? And the purpose of providence, like um, because I think growing up before I learned um, this message in a way where like I, I really felt that it related to me, or like I saw the conflicts that existed, right? Like both in the world and even within you know my own family, right? And within the church, like within providence, right? I saw. Um, the 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 wolf and the lamb like not um you know laying down together and eating together and following the child together but i saw the wolf and the lamb butting heads right and i saw the calf and the lion butting heads and arguing and fighting and all of those kind of things but i saw that the goal and what we're trying to do in this history is that yes for these people with differing characteristics to work together and to live together on this mountain. And this was such a big um, thing for me. And is that easy, right? Like, is that easy to do, right? It, it sounds good, right, as an idea, but when we see it in reality, it's really hard. But that's why the analogy and that's why the parable is there, right? Like, if it was easy, then we would all be uh, lambs, right? Or we would all be wolves, or we would all be uh, calves, or we would all be lions, right? Because it's much easier for uh, just the wolves, right? Because they live in a pack. And just the lamb, right? The sheep, because they live in a flock. They're all the same. But we're different, but we work together. Right? And that's so vital for this history, right? So in the past, we see, um, like, from the old stories, how it, it worked and how it didn't work, too, right? So uh, one of the, the characters and the figures that we talked about in the Bible a lot before is, right, about, about Joshua, and the time of um, like the, the second generation coming out from Egypt, like going into uh, the land of Canaan. All right. So in the recent few weeks, like on 2G Talks 2, like I, I think I've talked about this. Um, and so like recently I was like doing more research into Joshua, into Caleb, into the, the 10 other scouts and like um, figuring out their different characters and personalities. Because as we said, history started from one person. And so that means like the flaws that we see um, in some of the stories, like the, the mistakes that people made, it started from like one place, right? It started from like one person, right? So even for the 10 people, right? These 10 representatives of the tribes, like why, like if we're trying to think about like, why did they fail? Like how come they were not like Caleb and Joshua? It becomes a very interesting like thing to, to look into, right? So we look into like what made Caleb different, what made Joshua different, what made like each of the 10 people different, right? Um, and, you know, this is an interesting thought experiment to have because um, even in the world too, right? Like anyone who studies history, they look back at the things that happened in history and um, one of the common things that the people say is that people always think that they're going to be on the right side of history, right? And I think a classic example that we give is about, you know, Nazi Germany, right? People always think that they're going to be the one who, you know, saved Anne Frank. Like, they're going to be the one, uh, uh, who was it? Oh, on Schindler's List. Like, they all think they're going to be Schindler. They, they, they all think they're going to, like, save the, the, the Jewish people and, and do that when the vast majority of the time and the reality of it is that they probably would not have been that kind of person, right? And so for us too, like, uh, it, it, we teach this like very early on, right? We teach this about conflict and ignorance, right? We teach this when looking at John the Baptist's story, how uh, even John the Baptist was uh, uh, someone who failed in this regard, right? And this is like a shocking lesson for many people who come from the, the former faith, right? Uh, because John the Baptist in the former faith is, you know, considered to be a, a, a a uh, very important and successful uh, figure, right? Um, and well, with uh, Josiah and the Complete Ignorance story, it's not really something that's emphasized a lot in the former history. But we look at that, that lesson because we saw God's purpose, right? And so for us too, when we look at this history, 
right? The question becomes, how do we become like Josiah and Caleb? How do we not become like the 10 scouts? What kind of a characteristic did they have? How can we fulfill Isaiah 11 uh, and all of these connections today, right? How do we not become like what Josiah did? Um, and how do we become successful? And so that's why uh, we're going to have the segment called Bible Today. Um, and because we see this happening in our lives, right? So like as a final um, like kind of addition to this, right? the reason why like I really talk about second generation and even about Isaiah 11 is like growing up, I saw like the, the conflicts that happened right within my family and within like the church too, right? And so like we want to resolve those things. And even within my own life too, I think God made me see, right? We said like the second generation and like the people who are like reviewing the message, like, yeah, 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 yeah. We know the, we know the key point, right? We know the punchline. But actually, when we see in reality, we uh, can only see through our actions and through like um, our the message this week too. Like I was talking about dreams, right? Like using dreams, understanding dreams correctly, but using dreams to check our condition. So we may think that we know and we may like be like, oh, like sometimes this is not to say that this is everyone, but oftentimes this is the reality with kids, right? We're dismissive. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. We've, we've heard that lesson before. We know it. We know it. But in reality our fruits the fruits of our actions and this thousand year history before us and our family's continued history right for each person our physical and spiritual families and our churches that will determine whether we um, knew the word well whether we knew the trinity shimjong well whether we knew the man and mission well and whether we lived according to uh, the example that the King of Kings, that Jesus during the second coming and that something has set before us, right? And so, you know, like that, that at times is not easy, right? One of the things I shared before was like when I went to Hawaii, like we um, went out to go um, get signatures for the petition, right? And at the time I was working with someone and I don't know if they're going to listen to this segment, but they might, right? But I was working with someone who I like to say it's really different from me. Right. But the reality of it is that we're probably similar in many, many ways, but in like one regard or like in one way, we may be very different. Right. So in, in a way, right, I may be a cow, they may be a lamb right? something like that. But when we're together, it's like really hard. But like this is the history that we have to make. Right. And I saw that this person had a value and it, something that is so difficult for me came so naturally to this person. Right. And so to take advantage of that, to make history in a better way, the two of us had to work together. Right. And so in order to do that, like we have to make our constitution and we have to make our character into someone who can work together with this person. Right. And we we'll work together with people who are different from us. And so that's one lesson that I, I realized from the message of this week and from looking at the Bible, from looking at the idea that history starts from one person and that how we need to set the foundation right because we have the perfect example before us. Yeah. So I hope that everyone enjoyed today's segment for, um, you know, at the end. 117.8 um, episode 1101 and with this that going forward on these Tuesdays that we can look at the Bible more uh, carefully together if there's like certain parts that um, you guys want us to go over together or if there's like some, certain key passages or some knowledge that you have please feel free to share because I would love to know and you know um, I've only read through the Bible like a handful of times myself too. And there's so much that I don't know, but we want to make the connections from the past to the present so that we can know how to act in the future. Yes. Yeah, so once again, thank you to everyone. Thank you all so much for listening, for supporting, for liking, subscribing, for uh, commenting, asking questions, um, and being otherwise involved with both MSD 117.8. Uh, thank you, Peace Guy, for hosting and for having us again. And thank you so much to our beloved son. On this uh, on the week after Alpha Day, um, and thank you so much to Jesus and to the Holy Trinity for everything that they've done for pro providing all these things. Let's continue to write the Bible together in our actions, in writing, through songs, through uh, all the things that we do. And so, with this, I hope that you guys have a wonderful Tuesday wherever you are across the world.